Hi, I'm Alex Novikov, and I'm a career researcher from the University of Arizona. Today, I'm here to explain the reasons why we add headers and file names to all our corpus files. This video is part of a series our team has created to help you build your own corpus. So, uh, if you would like more information, uh, please visit our YouTube channel. Alright, so the purpose of the header and file name script is to create um, file names that contain metadata information and also to add headers with metadata uh, to each file. This way, uh, the metadata is present um, both in the file name and in the files themselves. Before we walk you through uh, the script and how to run it, it's important to understand why you want to run the script in the first place. So adding metadata to uh, your files through headers and file names can be a really helpful way to make sure that um, important aspects of your research questions, such as L1 background or assignment information, are easy to access and locate. Actually, having the information attached to the file itself can facilitate uh, your um, qualitative analysis of your data as well. Just as you want to think about the organization of your um, data into folders, uh, you also might want to think how you're organizing uh, the metadata within um, your file names and headers. Uh, for example, you may want to um, put the most important information in the file names and then also list that um, at the top of the headers within the files. Explain what we mean when, when we say metadata, headers, and file name. Let's start with metadata. Here's an example of some columns from the metadata spreadsheet that we provided as a demo data. As you can see, this metadata contain, contains information about students' first and last names, college, academic level, student major, country of origin, etc. We use a metadata spreadsheet like this one to create headers and file names. And here's an example of both a file name and a header. By using headers, uh, you can store metadata information in each text in your corpus. For Crow, we add the metadata between the angle brackets at the top of each text, as you can see here. By using angle brackets or another standardized form, you can choose not to display metadata information from views and corpus tools, such as Ancong, Langbox, or Wordsmith tools, because you wouldn't want it to be included in your linguistic analyses. Alternatively, you can use the header information in online interfaces as filters, and this is what we do for the Crow interface. Okay, now on to the file names. File name is the name of your file, and here's an example. However, this file name does not give us information about the text. Also, it has a student name, which needs to be anonymized. So instead, you should use a standard pattern for the file name to make it easier to locate the files that you need. One way to standardize your file names is to include codes that reflect information in your metadata. So in Crow, our standard file name looks like this, where the first three numbers stand for the course number, so 106, PS is the assignment code for a position argument. 1 stands for first draft. SAU is the code for Saudi Arabia. That's a student's country of origin. Another one is for year in school, so freshman. M is for gender, in this case male. And 10304 is an internal Crow ID. And UA is, of course, for the University of Arizona. Thank you for watching this video. Please visit our website, writecrow.org, to learn more about the corpus and repository of writing, including links to other writing research resources that we've built. Thanks again.